This year, the gap is thinner than ever between the base model iPhone and the pro level iPhone with the iPhone 15 and 15 Pro. And as somebody who usually recommends the pro phone to most people who ask, this year, I've noticed a major difference in my opinion and my overall experience after using both phones for nearly two months. So before you spend the extra cash on the Pro, please just hear me out in this video because you might leave just getting the regular 15 instead of the Pro. So let's start with the most obvious change in terms of design, and that is the frosted back glass because this texture on the back glass has always been reserved for the Pro iPhones and has always made them feel superior to the base model. But this year, the iPhone 15 has what Apple is calling a color-infused glass back. And while it doesn't feel quite as good as the Pros with their all-new titanium build on the sides and that textured matte glass on the back, it does look pretty much identical and it also feels pretty much the same as the Pro iPhone. And that's also a big benefit because you don't see the fingerprints on the back like you did on previous base model iPhones. Now, when you hold these phones, you will feel a difference between the two because we do have aluminum on the borders of the regular iPhone 15, whereas we have titanium on the borders of the 15 Pro. So it is gonna feel a bit more premium when you're touching the edges if you don't have a case on. But let's be real, most of you are hardly ever going to see or feel the back of your iPhone because you're going to have a case on. And if you're looking for a new stylish yet protective case, today's sponsor Bandwork has you covered. Bandwork's new performance performance leather case for the iPhone 15 and 15 Pro is made with German waterproof leather and has this sleek two-tone design. The buttons and the camera housing are made with aerospace grade aluminum for ultimate durability, but also for function because the volume buttons are extra clicky and easy to press. The sides and the top and bottom have this unique indentation that I've really not seen on many other cases, and it makes it really easy to grip if your phone is not on a MagSafe charger because we do also have a set of magnets inside that makes this case MagSafe compatible. My go-to has been the chocolate colorway, but it does also come in four additional colors. This has been my main case for about three weeks now, and it's held up extremely well. So even though it's leather, it's been very durable. And that microfiber lining has also kept the back of my phone scratch-free. So if you want to pick up one of these cases for your iPhone 15, head over to bandwork.com slash Brandon, or just click the link down in the description below. And fun fact, I've actually had multiple people guess which one is the pro iPhone and which one is the base model iPhone. I would cover up the camera, obviously, and I would show them. And about 60% of people guessed wrong. They thought that the base iPhone 15 was the pro iPhone 15. So that goes to show you that, you know, if you just have your phone out and about, most people are probably going to think it's the pro iPhone until they see, you know, it's missing a third camera. Or most people don't really even pay attention to that. So uh, the point of me saying this is that the iPhone 15 is the first base model iPhone that actually looks like a pro since the pros were ever introduced into the iPhone lineup. Now the 15 is a tad bit taller and wider than the 15 Pro, but the Pro is still 16 grams heavier, although you can't really tell the difference unless you hold them both in your hands at the same time. But in the pocket, they both feel pretty much identical. Now the other big change that makes the iPhone 15 look like the Pro model for the first time is the removal of the notch and the addition of the dynamic island. Now this is a feature that many thought was just a gimmick and kind of a way to cover up the pill-shaped cutout, but it has honestly been one of my favorite features ever since the iPhone 14, and it is constantly getting better via software updates and third-party app updates, like seeing, you know, my flight details via Flyd. I can see my Chick-fil-A delivery status or pickup status. I can see the weather while I'm browsing social media. I could just do all of that, and, it, you know, this feature just always keeps me in the know without having to leave what I'm doing, leave the current app I'm in, and I don't have to go into that application. I can kind of multitask by having that bubble pop out right there with updates. Now, speaking of that display, Apple gave the iPhone 15 1,000 nits of peak brightness, 1,600 nits while watching HDR, and 2,000 nits while outdoors. That is the exact same as the iPhone 15 Pro. Now, Apple did also replace the lightning port with a USB-C port on all iPhone 15 models, but the iPhone 15 only gets USB 2.0 speeds, which is the same as lightning. However, the iPhone 15 Pro gets USB 3.0 speeds, which equates to a 20 times faster transfer speed. So you're going to be able to transfer files 20 times faster on the Pro versus the regular 15. But there's a catch. 
The only way you're gonna be able to achieve those speeds is with a USB 3.0 compatible cable, which of course does not come in the box. So most of the time your transfer, you know, your file transfers are gonna be the exact same speed on both the 15 and the 15 Pro, unless you purchase the extra cable, which most people are not. Really the only advantage that the USB-C port has on the iPhone 15 Pro is the ability to record ProRes video directly to external storage. And that's something I've actually done on several occasions, but obviously that's not something that your average consumer, your average user is going to do more than maybe one a month. Now we've talked about a lot of similarities between the 15 and the 15 Pro, but that's going to be about where they end because there have been some pretty surprising, at least to me, advantages that the iPhone 15 Pro has over the iPhone 15 that I didn't really expect. The first of which is the camera system. Now, obviously I knew the camera was going to be better on the Pro. It's always better on the Pro, but I didn't actually realize how significant of a change it would be because in my head, I was thinking only the Pro Max is going to have super noticeable changes from the base model iPhone because it has that Tetra Prism 5X, you know, zoom, the 5X optical zoom, whereas the Pro does not have that. So the Pro Max is going to be, you know, the big upgrade over the Pro. So in my head, I was thinking, you know, the base model Pros is probably not going to be that much better than the iPhone 15 because it doesn't have that new, you know, camera, but I was wrong. So when taking photos, these two are going to take very similar shots with the main camera lens. And that's because for the first time ever on a base iPhone, we have a 48 megapixel sensor. So both are going to give you 24 megapixel shots by default, which is double that of the 12 megapixels on last year's 14 series. And it is noticeable. You know, it's a big difference compared to the older iPhones when you have those 24 versus 12. But the Pro and the regular 15 are going to be very similar when you just pull your phone out and take a quick shot. However, once you get into the more advanced functionality with the camera system, that's where you start to see the big advantages with the 15 Pro. And the first of which is the ability to shoot in Pro Raw. So you do have Pro Raw capabilities on the Pro, whereas you do not get those on the regular 15. However, you can still take 48 megapixels shots with what Apple is calling JPEG Max or HEIF Max based on your format settings. So you can still take advantage of full 48 megapixels, but you're not getting a real true raw image like you get with the pros. So if you're really into editing photos in Lightroom or Photoshop, then obviously the pro is going to be much better because you're going to really have more, you know, dynamic range. You're going to have more colors. You're going to have more data in that photo to touch up and post. Whereas you're not going to have that when you shoot even at the highest setting on the iPhone. 15. Now I did also want to talk about portrait shots because we do have that third lens here on the pro, which is the telephoto lens, and that's going to lead to better portrait mode shots. So you do have a three X optical zoom compared to the 15, which just uses the main lens with two X optical zoom to capture portrait shots. So you're going to get slightly better zoom on those shots. And I did notice that the portrait shots are better on the pro and especially on the pro max, since they have, you know, the dedicated telephoto cameras. But it's worth noting that both the 15 and the 15 Pros offer the ability to turn a normal photo with a face in it into a portrait shot after the fact. So again, another feature that you would think would be a pro level feature is in the iPhone 15. And that's, you know, using the chipset inside to be able to turn a normal shot into a portrait shot after the case. And I've done this like several times, several dozen times now, and it works flawlessly. However, something I've noticed I've done a lot in my camera testing this year has been night mode portrait shots. And that is something you can only do on the iPhone 15 pro. I really wish I had it on several occasions on the iPhone 15, but that is only for the pros. And then of course, my favorite type of photography on the iPhone is still just limited to the pros and that is macro mode. So taking macro shots is of course only limited to the pro models and you cannot take macro shots up close of eyeballs on the regular 15. So aside from the really specific features, the photo taking capabilities of the iPhone 15 compared to the iPhone 15 Pro are very similar. Like they're gonna take very similar shots in 95% of scenarios that you find yourself in. So why did I say that there's a big difference I didn't expect between the 15 and the 15 Pro? Well, that comes with video recording. So the iPhone 15 is stuck with Apple's first generation sensor shift optic image stabilization, whereas the iPhone 15 Pro has Apple's second generation sensor shift OIS. And you know, this might not seem like a huge deal, 
but wait until you see these two side by side, which you're not gonna do that, so that's why I did it for you. Take a look at this video right here, and you can see which one is probably taken. You can probably just guess which one is taken on the 15 and which one was taken on the 15 Pro. So yeah, a lot more wobble on the iPhone 15 camera compared to the 15 Pro and pretty much every single shot that I took while I was walking or running. And this is without action mode, by the way. With action mode, it's even more of a difference, but you can see that even without action mode, just regular video recording, there is a noticeable difference with OIS on the Pro compared to the 15. Now the Pro also has ProRes video recording, which normally is not a big deal. It's not normally something that I promote a lot or really talk a lot about as a big advantage because it eats up so much storage space that most people are just simply not going to ever use it but because we have USB-C this year you're able to record ProRes video in 4k directly to an external source like an SSD or an SD card and this let me tell you has been an absolute game changer for me I've recorded so much b-roll and just different videos in ProRes 4k because I'm recording it to an external source and I don't have to worry about it eating through all of my storage on my device like this is only a 128 gigabyte device and I would never be able to you know record much ProRes video but because I have an external SSD hooked up to it or I can just transfer real quick and then delete it off my phone whichever I do I'm able to record a lot of videos in ProRes 4k and the reality is if you're paying this much money for a phone you should want to get you know the best possible video out of it and that's why I think that you should shoot ProRes 4k video for like important videos or obviously if you're putting something up on social media you want to shoot that in the best quality possible and before it just wasn't really feasible it really didn't make sense but now because you can record to an external source it makes a ton of sense and that is a huge advantage that the pro has over the base iPhone 15 in my opinion now another area I didn't really expect to see much of a difference between the 15 and 15 pro in is with performance especially when it comes to gaming and multitasking now the a17 pro chip which which is on the iPhone 15 Pro is the industry's first three nanometer chip and it also offers three billion more transistors than the A16 chip along with an additional GPU core. And when it comes to RAM, the 15 has six gigabytes of RAM whereas the 15 Pro has eight gigabytes of RAM. And after close to three months of usage, I've noticed a pretty big difference here, both with apps staying open longer on the Pro along with less app relaunching just in general when accessing those applications from the you know app switcher I've just noticed less reloading when just going in and out of different applications especially overnight for some reason with the 15 when I was using this you know for several weeks in a row side by side with my 15 pro I noticed that when I woke up and I went back into an app I was on before I went to sleep I would have to relaunch on the 15 whereas that did not happen on the 15 pro but the most important difference between these two in terms of performance is with gaming and that's because the a17 pro chip has 20 percent faster graphics performance than the a16 on the iPhone 15 along with hardware accelerated ray tracing and mesh shading so both of those sound like you know if you have no idea what those are basically games just run better and are more efficient and just you have pretty much no lag on the iPhone 15 pros whereas you do have lag on the iPhone 15s but not just that we also now have exclusives for just the pro level iPhone 15s like Resident Evil Village this is a you know console level game on my 15 pro and the experience is just undeniably good like it is amazing and like I said you cannot even download this game for the base iPhone 15. Now we also need to discuss the action button because this year for the first time ever Apple replaced the mute switch on the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max with an action button and while I do love being able to quickly launch applications and trigger shortcuts and record a voice memo I realistically only use the action button maybe once or twice a week so I don't really think this feature is a reason enough to get the Pro over the base model iPhone 15. Like, yes, it's cool. I made a full customizability guide on you know how to get the most out of your action button, but at the end of the day, I don't think this feature alone is worth paying extra for. But one area where I do think it makes more sense to go with the Pro over the base model iPhone is with the display. Now, I talked earlier about how we have the same brightness levels on both models, along with the same dynamic island on both models, 
But the massive difference in these two displays is with the refresh rate, because with the Pro models, you get a 120 hertz ProMotion display, whereas you have the standard 60 hertz display on the iPhone 15. And this just makes the Pro model feel more smooth and just more snappy overall compared to the iPhone 15. But that's not even the reason that I love the ProMotion 120 hertz display this year. It's not just because of what you do while you're using your phone, it's what you do when you're not using your phone. So because of the ProMotion technology, the Pro can drop all the way down to one hertz, which gives us the always on display, something that is very useful by itself, but with the introduction of iOS 17, it's even more of a must have feature thanks to standby mode. So when you throw an iPhone 15 Pro on a wireless charger or just plug it in and turn it into landscape mode, you get a standby mode screen that does not disappear after a few seconds like on the regular 15. And as somebody who uses this feature literally every single day for the majority of the day, that is a huge deal. And then lastly, let's talk about battery life because Apple rates the iPhone 15 Pro for an additional three to four hours of video playback over the 15, but it gives the 15 five additional hours when audio streaming. But nobody in the right mind is only doing video streaming or audio streaming. So I tested these out in real world scenarios. And I noticed that before iOS 17.0.3, the update that fixed the overheating issue, I constantly got better battery life on the 15 Pro by well over an hour, sometimes up to two and a half hours longer than the base iPhone 15. But ever since then, I've hardly been able to tell a difference in battery life between these two phones. Some days the 15 Pro lasts longer, some days the 15 lasts longer. It really just comes down to what you're doing on the phones. But honestly, you know, after using these for a few months now, there's really not much of a difference between the two in battery life to justify paying more or paying less for one or the other. They're pretty much close to the same at the end of the day. So all in all, I think the iPhone 15 is a much better value this year than any previous year we've had a base and a pro level iPhone. And for that reason, I think that most people should just stick with the base model iPhone 15 and you really don't need to go with the pro this year, unlike you have in previous years, especially if you don't care about the action button, you don't need a 120 hertz display, or you don't require the best of the best quality when it comes to pictures and especially video, then the 15, trust me, is going to be your best choice. However, if you are coming from a pro iPhone and if you've used that 120 hertz display before, it's gonna be really hard to go back down to a 60 hertz display. So for that reason alone, I think you should go with the pro. And of course, also if you care a lot about the video and all the things we talked about throughout this video the pro might make sense for you but again for most people the 15 is going to be the one i recommend to most people this year for the first time ever that we've had a base and a pro model iphone so i hope you guys enjoy this video if you did i would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up also check out the wallpapers i used throughout this video down in the description below but anyways guys thanks again for watching and i'll see you soon